Um, they say that circumstantial evidence can be powerful, powerful evidence. Now, we know that the judges in most of the courts in the UK, America, they rely sometimes on circumstantial evidence to eventually arrive at a person being found guilty. And they don't um, lead the jury, they just point out to the jury that you have to take into consideration more than one piece of evidence before you can decide on whether someone's guilty or not. But you can also use circumstantial evidence to prove that the Bible is God's word. So how are we going to do that? How are we going to use circumstantial evidence? Well, I'm not. But a man called Kevin Fisher, he will. And welcome back to Shabbat Night Live. We are continuing with our guests. We have a ton of great things to talk about with Kevin Fisher. Kevin, you are the president of Ark Discovery International. Your website is arkdiscovery.com. Obviously, we're going to talk about Ark things coming up, uh, yes. Ark of the Covenant, Noah's Ark, and we've talked about uh, Sodom and Gomorrah in our last episode. Today, we're going to be talking mainly about, in this section, the Red Sea Crossing something that's close to Michael's heart. Uh, we've got a photo of it behind us, and you have a video you'd like to share with us, uh, and you're going to tell us what's going on there. Yes. Before we start the video, we have a map here of the Sinai Peninsula, Okay. where the children of Israel, they left Egypt proper, which will be over in the Cairo area, for instance, and they traveled east across the Sinai, and then they were told to turn south, which that brought them down through the Wadi Watur, through the mountains, and then the Wadi Watur emptied out onto this large beach that we see on the east side of the Sinai Peninsula and, and the western, is, western edge of the Gulf of Aqaba. And that is Nueva. That's Nueva, and that's where we're headed to. That's the Red Sea Crossing site. So in our video here, we're going to go down to Nueva from two different directions. We'll first start out here in Cairo, and then uh, from there, we'll... You know the saying? He's done the research so that you don't have to. Yeah, Kevin Fisher. He goes to extraordinary lengths. He doesn't always have permission to take uh, these videos in these countries, especially on the Saudi Arabia side of things. That was a no-no. So that's like secret camera footage. There's a bit more freedom on the other side. But you still need the cooperation of the government. And he points all this out. But... I'm fascinated because he's so zealous. He's so zealous to get to the truth and prove that these historical prophecies that we've read about in the Bible actually have some foundation and proof. And I absolutely think that this is wonderful, this video. I'll head over to Nueva, and then in the second part of the video, we'll be heading down from Elat Israel down to Nueva. So here we're starting out in Cairo, and we're driving through the city here. You can see it's quite large. You see the minarets and so forth in the background. So you're literally going to take us to Sinai in your yes, car? Yes, yes. All right, this is great. This is the route. We're going to actually travel almost the route that the children of Israel took. So from here, we're going to look south. And in the distance, as we zoom in, we can see the pyramids at Giza, the Great Pyramid, mm. and so forth. Right here next to the city, it's quite amazing that you could see the pyramids right next to the city from that a distance. That is quite a sight. Yeah. So uh, a lot of history here going back. And so we're headed south. We can see the Bent Pyramid in the distance. We got our taxi taking us down to the Step Pyramid. And there it is. This is the pyramid that Joseph built, by Wyatt thought. And the National Geographic, they mentioned some inscriptions along the Nile River where it mentioned that Imhotep had saved his country from a seven-year famine. Hmm. So does that sound kind of like Joseph? That is a little familiar, isn't yes. it? Yes. So Imhotep built this pyramid. It's considered the first and oldest pyramid in Egypt. Wow. He built it for his king, Zoser. But at this complex are some underground vertical silos, which held grain. You know, during the seven years of plenty, they had to store the grain someplace. So a great place to store it would be underground, where it's cooler. You know, the grain would... First piece of circumstantial evidence. 
they had to store the grain for when it was not plentiful, then they would have a reserve supply, as the Bible did say. Yes, I love circumstantial evidence. Last longer. And so at this complex here are a series of underground vertical silos. Now they had to bring the grain up. And so there's one exit point for these silos. And this is the exit point where they would go down and get the first grain out. The first grain that went in came out first, first in, first out. And so they went down these steps and carried the grain up in you know, bags of grain. So Joseph was able to save his country. So it was uh, the from ancient, uh, ancient best before date system. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so uh, this made you know, Egypt very rich, the mm -hmm. sale of the grain. So in our graphic again here, the map, we're going to go across the Sinai and we're going to turn south and go through the mountains to the Red Sea crossing site. That's our destination. But uh, you know, Solomon's seaport was on the northern tip of the Gulf of Aqaba at Elat, according to 1 Kings 9.26, and it termed this body of water as Yom Suf, or the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. That is the body of water we're heading over to, the Gulf of Aqaba. And as we're heading east out of Cairo, we're taking our taxi, and we encounter the uh, Suez Canal that we've all heard of. And along the way here, we have to go underneath the Suez Canal. There's a tunnel going underneath the Suez. It's over a mile in length. Uh, That's one way of uh, going through the waters on dry ground, yes, I suppose. Yes. <laughs> so uh, our driver's taking us through the tunnel here, and we've got an abbreviated video segment of it as we enter. And it's a quite nice, but it is a small you know, two-lane tunnel. But then we come out the other side after driving over a mile, and we have just left Africa, and we're now in Asia. And we're going to go across the Sinai Peninsula, similar to the route that the children of Israel took. So along the way, you see the, all the flat terrain. You know, this would enable them to travel more quickly across the Sinai. You know, they want to get out of Dodge as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. And three million people in tow, if not yes, more. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So again, we're taking a video of different segments along the way. Again, you see the flat terrain as we're heading further east. When you saw that flat terrain then, I don't know about you, but I'm getting that vision of when the exodus occurred and three million were then told they can leave the Pharaoh, but, but he virtually had enough, hadn't he? You know, he'd lost uh, that firstborn and he was on his knees with grief. And so the gates opened and three million then left. And that flat terrain there, I can just imagine it being vastly populated with the nation of Israel as they're leaving with their goats, all their livestock, everything that they have, including their gold. They took the gold with them as well. This is circumstantial evidence, people. And again, this may be an area where we kind of headed south. And again, you see a really flat area where the children of Israel would have journeyed through here. They would have never suspected that they would be entangled in the desert, as the word says, uh, encountering an Awadi Watir after seeing yes, this. I'm sure a lot of the men that knew the area, when they turned south, they became concerned, you know, where is Moses taking us? Right. But uh, Well, as Michael Rood points out in his video, Nueva, in the beach, you're, you're pretty much cornered. You've got yes. you know, wilderness to one direction and armies to the other. Yes, right. Right. And so in this area, we're getting closer to the Wadi Watur that goes through the mountains. Again, the flat, nice terrain. And here's the beginning of the Wadi Watur. It's, it's a wider area, but you see the mountains on the right and the left. Mm. And uh, plenty of room through here. It's a nice, generous, wide area. You almost wonder if they thought, great, we're going to be hidden in here, and that's, that's going to be a good thing. Yes. 
but uh, was not but the case. They found out later, <laughs> yeah, it came to a stop. So here's the wadi we're going to travel through to get to the large beach there. And this is where it will exit later. Mm. This is from Google Earth. Can you imagine getting millions of people through there? That would have been a feat. It itself. became tight at some point, but in the distance we see the mountain we'll head to later in our next segment, Mount Sinai. It's over absolutely in Saudi incredible, Arabia. isn't it? But uh, you can see the History orientation of the crossing site to the Mount Sinai in this graphic here. So here we are, we're going through the Wadi Watur. We see the mountains. This is a nice wide area that we stopped. And, and it's still fairly passable here. Yes. It does not look like a threat at all. Right. But as it gets narrow, you can see here it's much narrower and things were a bit congested and there is nothing there i mean no wonder they were concerned there's no food there's no water yes just a bunch of rock and this is that narrow strip isn't it with mountains on either side that eventually leads to what they thought was an ambush this is absolutely fantastic from kevin fisher and right so and you can't go, you can't take your wagons over top of these mountains here. No. Look how steep this is. We have to remember, there's no asphalt in that day. I mean, there's no smooth road. They're feeling every bump. They're <laughs> yes. Likely twisting ankles, trying to get away yeah, so fast. Exactly. And so, winding our way through this narrow area, it gets more and more narrow. Here we make a turn through a narrow spot. And I think we may pan up at some point and you can see how steep these large mountains are. So it says in Exodus 14, they're tangled in the land, the wilderness hath shut them in. So Exodus is telling us they're going through the Wadi Watur, they feel all shut in, they're entangled, you know, they're winding their way through these narrow mountains. Circumstantial evidence. And yeah, for those who argue a different crossing point, that verse would not make sense. Right. Where are they going right. to be literally entangled? Yes, and you can see how steep it is. Very steep there. We, we shot up there. And again, yeah. very Imagine narrow. Imagine it, Moses and three million of of these children of Israel. Said, For there was on each side the ridge of mountains that Amazing. terminated at the sea, which were impassable by reason of their roughness, and obstructed their flight. So again, he is agreeing with what the Bible is saying about the mountains and even with more detail that yeah, would further prove that it's terminating at the sea mm -hmm. and here we're getting closer to the exit point closer to the beach where they'll come to a stop in the distance are the end of the mountains and this is the end of the wadi Watur. you can see here where it's washed out recently mm. now had you wondered as you were approaching this where did that fire come down and separate the Egyptians. And we will see evidence of it. Really? Yes. Okay. We will show that to you. So here we're getting closer to the exit point of the wadi. In the distance is the beach. And past that, we can see in the distance now the water of the Gulf of Aqaba. Now, there's something on that beach, uh, modern, is there not? There's some kind of, there's some buildings there. There is, and we'll see that, yes. So there's the now I'll make it about three to four pieces of circumstantial Lebanon. evidence that the Bible bears and out against show you the historical findings. To get to the beach. And this, it's nice to be right there at the Red Sea crossing. And here we're panning across. You can see the mountains of Saudi Arabia. So that's where they are going, but they have no idea how they're going to get across. How they're can you imagine it? being on that beach, looking yes. at that, saying, Moses, what have you done? No wonder they thought that we're yes. dead. Right. But, of course, Moses had full faith in God, that God would do something. He didn't know exactly what. But so today you can go there and stand beside this pillar. And that's all thanks to Ron Wyatt. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Essentially. And, and Solomon, who, who erected it to start with. Of course, yeah. <laughs> so, you know. So, uh, the matching column on the Saudi Arabian side had Hebrew writing on it still. When Ron found it in 1984, it said, Solomon, Pharaoh... Yahweh, death, Mizraim, which means Egypt. Mm -hmm. Did you get that then? The writing? Yeah, Yahweh. So Yahweh was written on it. Bit of more circumstantial evidence. Um, water, Edom. So this was a marker marking the red sea crossing spot oh, and this, some, someone has made their own markings on it yes apparently. unfortunately but uh, modern graffiti but um solomon seaport elath 
was 50 miles to the north there at modern day Elat. And so Solomon, this was his area, this was his neighborhood. And so 400 years after the fact, he had these column, columns erected to mark the spot of the Red Sea crossing. He knew full well where this event took place. So that must have been passed down from family to family. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So it's a 16 foot red granite Phoenician style column, beautiful. And there's obviously no writing on there. That's all been washed off now. The back side of it has been eroded away. It doesn't look this nice. And that's where probably some writing was. Mm. But that is, that's a solid piece of granite. That's not like yes. the Sodom and Gomorrah limestone that we saw. This is, right. it's, uh, this is very solid red mm -hmm. granite. It's very beautiful. So from here, we can get a look at where this is in relation to the water. It's set back. The water's a couple hundred yards away. And this is the beach here, essentially. Yeah, this is the crossing area right here where the water actually opened up. Wow. Yes. It's amazing to stand here south to the actual crossing site and here you can see the beach where the waters opened up we're standing at the exact spot wow yes and the mountains of saudi arabia in the distance did your knees get wow well, don't cover it does it it's more than wow i mean this is just it's jehovah's handiwork they stood in the very place where they witnessed the nation of Israel, the children of Israel, witnessed the power of Jehovah. Wow. <laughs> it's just, thanks, Kevin. Because he was so passionate about going over there. The average person wouldn't have put this kind of effort in. You have to be a truth seeker, a proper truth seeker to get these, to get these answers. Absolutely amazing sitting there was it a, <laughs> was it a, uh, an awesome thing it was to quite behold? incredible yes to, to be there mm. and so in the foreground right in front of us here is a melted beach where the sand and the stones were literally melted together like this is incredible when he's talking about this melted beach this this is the fire that kept the egyptians at bay until the last of the children of Israel had crossed. And this is circumstantial evidence. Please listen. Really? This is not loose sand. This is a melted beach, which the pillar of fire created when it stood here. So separating the Egyptian army from yeah. the fleeing Israelites. Yeah. So again, this is more evidence, you know, that confirms the location My here. My goodness. Now, how did you find out about that? I had heard about it and then I, I saw it myself, you know. So here it is. You see this rock is just infused in with the sand and the little rocks there. And this is all hardened. This is like concrete. And that is amazing. Jason here is stepping on it. It's, it's very solid. This is a different area. How did the locals explain this? I asked the local, the hotel owner was here with us that we know, and he says, I've never seen this before. You know, he said his hotel's in a different area, but you know, he was amazed at what he saw. So, uh, well, there's the evidence right there. It's yeah, solid. Right. And so a piece of it was broken off for us to look at. And you can see up close here, all the little rocks and the sand, they're melted together, infused wow. by the pillar of fire. And this goes on for some ways. This isn't just one little spot. And so Ron Wyatt went, went scuba diving out there and various things have been found in the water. You can see human femur bone that is coral encrusted, which would be something you would expect. And on the left here, we see a normal one. On the right, you see the coral encrusted femur from one of the soldiers. On the top left, you see a human rib cage stuck in the coral. Now what about people who say, oh, this is just, this is table coral. It's, it's, just... it, it's not because it has metal in it. And so here's a horse's mm. hoof. It's shriveled up when they took it out of the water. Mm -hmm. It's shriveled up. So again, we have horse parts, human parts. What are we seeing here? What is this coral? Uh... And so this is coral standing on an axle and it has a raised center hub with spokes going outwards. Here's another 
round chariot with a raised center hub and then spokes going out and it's got a round shape to it. Again, it's covered in coral. Do some people say that these are just modern shipwrecks? Some people have said that, but again, this agrees totally with the design of the chariot wheels. Mm. With the raised center hub and using metal detectors, there is metal in the center. There are spokes going out. This is a four spoke wheel with three spokes left. Four spoke wheels, six spoke wheels, and eight spoke wheels. This is incredible. It really is. They're finding chariot parts. The golden center of the uh, chariot wheel that was synonymous with the Egyptians. This is just, just evidence, isn't it? Evidence that, that the Bible is a book you can believe in and that God does exist. This is not a fairy tale. Found here, hmm. of course, using the metal detector, like he's demonstrating here, all the hubs here contain metal, and that is the design of the Egyptian chariot wheel with the metal center hub. Now here is a gold-plated wheel. There were 600 choice chariots used in the Exodus, we're told. So you would expect to find 1,200 uh, chariot wheels here with gold. And this one is special, it's gold-plated. And two or three of these were found by Mr. Wyatt. Hmm. Now we see a more shallow area where the Red Sea crossing took place. It's shallower here compared to the north and compared to the south. It's still deep, it has to be a deep area. Is 2,800 feet deep, but that gives you a 4% grade, which is manageable. Over in Saudi Arabia, you see the remains of the pillar uh, that was found there on the Saudi Arabian side. It was cut down by the Saudi authorities. It had Hebrew writing on it. We don't know where it is. But there in the Saudi waters, Vivica Pontin went scuba diving and she found this beautiful chariot wheel in the Saudi Arabian waters. So you have chariot parts on the Egyptian side, chariot parts on the Saudi Arabian side. So but it's not the crossing site. It couldn't be. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the critics would say. But uh, you know, the evidence is here. It's real. So we rented a boat and went out with a Rove, a remote operated vehicle, uh, had a 100 foot tether. And so we were going to do some little inspecting ourselves. This for, is a submarine camera. Yes, for okay. a few hours. And we didn't have days and weeks to do this. But we had a few hours. We rented a nice boat here to take off. We headed down toward the south end of the beach. We're headed toward that area. And you can see the waters uh, extending over to Saudi Arabia in the distance. And so were you stopped by the Saudi authorities like uh, Leonard Mueller was? They, sometimes they do, yeah. If they suspect <laughs> you, they'll come over and see what you're up to. Mm. But uh, so now we're in the approximate area and we're gonna, we're gonna throw the drone into the water. So are you closest to what, which land is that we're there? We're close to Egypt close here, to Egypt. Saudi, right. uh, excuse me, Sinai okay. Peninsula. So we're getting it ready for another launching here. So here's the camera, it's got three propellers. Um, and it's giving us a live feed back up into the boat. And uh, so that day we were able to see something. I looked around, but we couldn't confirm that it was a chariot wheel. So here we're launching it. And then here's an instant replay on board the Rove. The Rove's videoing this. And so we're down in the water. So where you are is not that deep where you are right here. Right, Close it's, to it's not that deep, yes. And so you can see some coral parts here. But again, coral doesn't grow on sand. That's there has true. to be it something to, to grow to something, on. Yes. Mm -hmm. So obviously there has to be something down there. Yeah. But this area is very remote. I wouldn't imagine that it's, you know, pieces from human, uh, from modern humans, because why would they be there? There's, there's nothing there. Yes. So some of these objects here may be from the, uh, you know, the Pharaoh's army. We can't tell for sure. This is fascinating. So we have the, the video from the Red Sea Crossing. Thank you for showing us your, your trip down there. Uh, after the break, we are going to come back and uh, talk about Mount Sinai, what's on the other side of the Red Sea Crossing. So we look forward